Hello, welcome back to another video. Today I will be showing you how to make easy, gluten-free, egg-free, nut-free pumpkin cookies. First, I'm just gonna tell you the ingredients. So, for all the dry ingredients, you will need two and a half cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, and one teaspoon of cinnamon. The pumpkin pie spice and cinnamon are optional. A quarter teaspoon of salt, one and a quarter cup of granulated sugar, one cup of powdered sugar. And then for all of the wet ingredients, you're going to need, well, I guess butter is considered wet, but you'll need a half a cup of softened butter, one cup of pumpkin puree, puree, I don't know how to pronounce it, I, yeah, I think it's puree, but, um, it usually comes in the cans, but those cans come in two cups, so just split it in half. So one cup of pumpkin puree and one egg. But if you're making it egg-free, like I am, um, you'll just use one and a half teaspoons of egg replacer and two tablespoons of water. And I'll show you um, what the box looks like later in the video. And that's all the ingredients, and... I'm gonna get right into baking. Okay, I'm back. Let's start making these cookies. First, you're gonna wanna mix all the dry ingredients together. So first, I'm gonna use the flour, which you're supposed to have two and a half cups of, which is, I think, a lot of flour. So just use regular flour. I put it in one of these things. Dump it all into your mixing bowl. I may actually need a larger mixing bowl. Okay, I'm back. I have a different bowl. This is slightly bigger. So yeah, make sure you have a big enough bowl because you're going to need quite a bit of ingredients. And then I would take the um, sugar, just granulated sugar. You're going to need uh, just one cup of that. Pour all that in. So then it, right now it's looking um, very, very white. And um, then you're going to take your salt. Uh, I have, I think I'm just using iodized salt. I'm pretty sure that works, at least I hope it does. And then um, pour that in. You only need a quarter of a teaspoon of that, so you really don't need that very that much. And then you are going to need cinnamon cinnamon right here and you're gonna need a teaspoon of cinnamon you can kinda see it quite a bit is falling in right there so that should be enough so it's getting a bit more color to it but that should be it for your cinnamon and then let's see here what else are you gonna need you're gonna need baking soda and again you're just gonna need a teaspoon of this. You have a lot of things that only you need a teaspoon for. You're also gonna need baking powder, but can kind of see it quite a bit is falling in right there, so that should be enough. So it's getting a bit more color to it, but that should be it it for your cinnamon and then let's see here what else are you going to need you're going to need baking soda so there is the baking soda teaspoon of that and then another teaspoon of baking powder so get this uh, so right here, actually my hands are really full right now so I'm holding it with my mouth, the camera, put that in, there, set it. Okay, jeez, that was difficult, okay, and then, 
there wasn't quite enough for a teaspoon, so I'm just going to pour whatever is left in. And that is the end of our baking powder. <laughs> um, and then also, I forgot to mention, make sure to turn your oven up to 350 degrees. And that is, oh wait, you eat pumpkin pie spice, obviously, making pumpkin cookies. Start, so add about a teaspoon of that. Maybe a little extra. And then that is it for your dry ingredients. And then just mix all that together. And um, in the next part, I will show you how or what wet ingredients you're going to need right now. And I bet some of you are also wondering what do you do with or what do you cook it on? Just cook it on a normal um, cookie sheet pan or whatever you want to call it, but um, grease it in non-cook cooking spray. I'm just going to set that over there and I just put it right by my well mixed in dry ingredients and I bet some of you are also wondering, well what do you do with the powdered sugar that you just mentioned in the beginning of your video? Well I have this nice little cup right here. You're needing a cup of confectioner sugar or powdered sugar, whatever you want to call it. And then pour, I'm gonna just going to pour it into that smaller bowl, pour it into really any bowl, and then set that aside for later use as well. Okay, and as for the wet ingredients, you are going to be mixing them in this thing right here. If you have one of them, they really all it does is it just mixes all your ingredients together. But anyway, there's supposed to be a pan that comes with it. So just mix all your wet ingredients together first. So you're going to need to have softened butter. That is right here. Um, you're going to have to have a cup of pumpkin right here. The can actually come that you usually buy it and it actually comes with two cups. So just open that up and grab one of the cups or just measure out one cup. And for the egg, you can either use one egg from your fridge or you can um or you can just use this egg replacer. This is what I always use. It's literally called egg replacer. And for if you look on the back, it is um, one and a half teaspoons of this plus two tablespoons of warm water equals one egg. So I have that concoction right here in this cute little thing. And then just want to mix all that in. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be mixed in to the other stuff anyway. So just like somewhat it really doesn't even have to be mixed in you can add them separate and um, you want to pour all this in it kind of glooped right in there so that's the egg and then put in the pumpkin <laughs> it's real this is also pretty gloopy if that's what you want to say and then place in your butter and then it's a nice little concoction of items. And then you're going to bring this over to your little machine over here. I'm sure it's plugged in, otherwise it probably won't work. And then you're going to be using this type. It's the type you usually use for baking because if yours um, came with more than one of these like ours did, then you might need that little extra explanation. And then you're going to make sure to lock it, otherwise it like might go leave, or just decide to leave or something. And then you don't have to turn it on real high, maybe just like three or four, and turn it on at four. Probably four would be good. See, everything is getting all mixed in, and it looks, it looks pretty gross right now, but um, I'm going to let this all mix in and come back when it's basically all mixed in. It will get a lot better. You just gotta slowly add some of your flour mixture into the 
stirring, magical stirring pot. Oh, and another thing. Um, the recipe doesn't necessarily call for this, but I always add oil. Um, how I would add maybe like a teaspoon of vanilla. Oh, and the flash turned on again. No, okay, there we go. Um, just vanilla, just to make it, I don't know why, it just makes it taste a little bit better. So, you really don't need that much, just like, a teaspoon, not a tablespoon, that'd be a lot. I added about a teaspoon. And, as you can see, it is starting, definitely starting to look a whole lot better. Yeah, I'll come back once I have most of the flour in, which may be a little while, just because I have quite a bit left, but as you see, can see, I stirred it all in and stuff. But it's looking pretty, pretty good. But I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I think this is finally starting to look like um, actual cookie dough. Oh, whoa, that's a big old pile of cookie dough batter. But... Let's, let's see how it tastes. By the way, when it's just like the pumpkin and butter mixture, do not try it. I tried it and it's really, oh, this is pretty good. <laughs> but I tried the just the pumpkin and butter mixture. My spoon literally disappeared. Oh, it's stuck. Okay, great. Nope, that's not going to happen again. Okay, um, so just get off all of this. Try to get all of it off. Um, yeah, and then the next, I bet some people are, um, still like, wait, 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 where did the powdered sugar go? I will show you what to do with the powdered sugar in just a moment. That's, like, the fun part of this recipe. Well, I like baking, but, like, that's the most fun part. I have just a little scoop of this, but then again, you don't want it to be, like, overflowing with cookie dough batter. And then... So take about a scoop of this, of this, and then just plop it in the flour. Just coat it in flour. This part's like so fun. And then you can just squeeze it and it's so satisfying. Oops! Actually did not try to do that. So you might need more powdered sugar, but it's really to your liking. Um, Try not to get like way too much, otherwise it might not cook too well. But there's one, they're so cute. And um, if I did this all on camera, it would literally take forever. So I'm going to do most of the other ones, and I'll be right back. Okay, that actually took a little longer than I thought, but they actually make a lot of cookies. See, I filled up all of these. There's 15 just on this tray, and then on this tray there is um, 13, so they make about 28, so about 30 cookies, that's quite a bit, but um, they actually really don't take too long, and it is so fun to roll them all in the powder sugar, like, that is my very f favorite part, but they really don't take long to cook, they only take 6 to 8 minutes, and if you want them chewier, I would start at 6, if you want them more crunchy, maybe do 8 minutes, but still check on them every once in a while. And yeah, I think the oven's ready. I'm gonna put in the cookies and then I'll show you the finished product once they're done. Okay, so I just pulled them out of the oven after the six minutes and they didn't work, so I put them in for another two minutes. Still didn't work. Figured I probably had them way too thick, so I just took a fork, smushed them down, and I have the other one in the oven right now. So I'm doing it just with the other batch. And then just with a little sifter, if you can put powdered sugar into that, because the powdered sugar, once it starts cooking, does start um, going like into the cookies. So you can just put it over each of the cookies just to give it a little extra decoration. And while it does seem like quite a lot now, it will go into the cookies. And then, yeah, so it'll be like a nice amount. And I'm just going to check. That's what... The ones in the oven look like, like right now. It's really hot. Um, yeah, and they'll, I'm going to put them in. They're going to be in here for another about two to three minutes, and then take them out and see how they look.
Okay, so this is the final product. They're finally done. Um, I said I would put them in for about three more minutes. I was about to say three more seconds. I ended up putting them for maybe seven more minutes. Eight more minutes, possibly. I think it was like seven or something. But they actually look pretty decent. They are actually acting like cookies right now. So, like, if you were to pick one up, it wouldn't completely fall apart and turn into pumpkin goop. But yeah, just, again, these are egg-free, peanut-free, and gluten-free, so if you have any allergies or are just gluten-free, this would probably be a good dessert, because um, they look really good. I haven't tasted one yet, but they look really good. And make sure, from what I've learned, do not make the cookies too thick, otherwise they will take quite a while, and you'll have to pat them down with a fork. But other than that, um, the cookies turned out pretty well. And I would definitely consider trying this recipe. Um, yeah, see you in the next video.